in my opinion, a screenplay is a blueprint and it's a blueprint that should invite collaboration from other creatives. It's not meant to be a be all and end all. A screenplay is never finished until it's on the screen. It's as simple as that, right? It's never done. And you might stay as the original writer or in most cases, you'll just be fired and I'll get someone else who has more experience than you to rewrite your script. Now you'll get paid, you will get paid, right? But you may lose the credit if I have to rewrite 50% of your script, um, which I'll try not to do. Let's have a look at here. So the roar of a crowd, the revving of a motorcycle engine, the faint voices of an announcing team. Uh, I don't, that takes a long time to read that. So in darkness, right? Roaring crowd. Oops. My typing is terrible. Roaring motorcycle engine. Can I see them? No, I can't see what's going on because I'm in darkness, right? One of the things sometimes new screenwriters will forget is this is a visual medium, right? I'm near, I'm, I need to be able to relate to the screenplay visually, right? Faint voices of an announcing team. How do I know they're an announcing team? Can't see them, can I? I don't know what they're doing, right? Faint, we could put it in another way, couldn't we? Faint um, announcements. Uh, it could be uh, faint, teeny voices. Something that describes it, right? Because I don't know what they're announcing until I get down to male announcer one, right? Who's a character, right? Title, daredevil, that's fine if you want to put it there. I will make something clear, though. You as a screenwriter will not get to tell anyone where a title card or the titles go. Not ever. That's the editor and the producer's and the director's job. Sorry. But you can put it there as a suggestion. No harm in that at all. Um, male announcer one. You better believe me when I say this one, This is one for the record books. Male, female announcer two. Guinness is in the house. This is going to be the thrill of a lifetime. Wait. Let me read that again. You better believe me when I say this is one for the record books. Guinness is in the house. This is going to be... Well, this seems. This is present tense. This is future tense, right? If I'm reading that, you better believe me when I say this is gonna be one for the records. Maybe I'm being nitpicky. Gonna be one for the record books, mainly because it hasn't started yet. By the sounds of it, Guinness is in the house. This is going to be the thrill of a lifetime. Right? So we've got, we've got, you know, they're in the present, right? Now, I'm being nitpicky, but it does matter. Right, because we're setting the scene here. Something's coming, not something's already here. Something's coming, right? William Bryce Stadium, Columbia, South Car South Carolina. Um, I'll assume that's South Carolina. Night. All right, that's a good slug line. Slug lines for me are all, can also be part of the description, rather than just saying an apartment, right? I can save myself some description room by telling me what type of apartment. A filthy apartment, you know, blood-stained apartment, uh, something like that in the slug line that helps set the tone and the setting before I've even got to the description, right? Don't need that here because Mark's been pretty, pretty specific about where we are, right? So he's going to have to go to the description and give us, I don't know what William Bryce Stadium looks like, no idea. So I need a feeling of it, right? And one of the other things I will say about description is it's not my job to tell actors how to move, right? He scratches his head. No, he doesn't. He's confused, right? You tell an actor how to feel. Let them play it how they want to play it, right? Can't be telling their bodies what to do unless it's somehow pushing the plot forward or it's necessary in that moment. Try to take out any of that kind of stuff. Slow motion. Camera flashes bounce off camera flashes. So, you know, let's do that. Let's make sure that we're focusing on camera flashes bounce off the dark tinted helmet visor of an anonymous motorcycle daredevil dressed in a black rhinestone studded Elvis ensemble to rival that of evil Knievel. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Okay. I usually get rid of the, don't need it. Camera flashes bounce off tinted. Well, tinted stark, isn't it? Tinted helmet visor, redundant a little bit. Visor of anonymous. Okay, so if that, if, if that is the character, 
Let's do all of this. I know the film's called Daredevil, but let's do that. Um, dressed in black, dressed in black, rhinestone studded Elvis ensemble to rival that of Evil Knievel. Do we need both simile? Like, do we need it? Rhinestone studded ensemble. I remember what Evil Knievel looked like, right? So I don't need the Elvis reference. Or it might be black rhinestone studded ensemble to rival that of, you know, the 1970s Elvis. Something like that. Do we need both? Um, does it still give me that image, right? We understand that he's on a motorcycle, right? It's a motorcycle daredevil. So I may not need the evil Knievel, right, because I've already referred to him. So maybe I can put rival that of Elvis. Oops. We just lost a line of description. You're welcome. Right? See what I'm doing? So really, this is a blueprint, right? We don't need the wordiness. And look, to be fair, when you're writing that first draft, you can waffle a little bit. You're going to go back and rewrite it anyway, right? So feel free to do that. I'm just doing a rewrite here. Fans cheer wildly. Let's give it a, let's do it all. Why not? Now, fans can cheer, but they can cheer wildly. So I don't mind that, right? Right? Let's give it its own line, as, as a matter of fact. That's what we want to hear. That's a sound. Another rule for description is if it's a new camera angle or a new shot, it gets a new line, right? It gets a new line. So we'll explore that too. iPhone, I'm going to put iPhone there. iPhone cameras aimed because, you know, my flip phone didn't, the early flip phones and the brick phones didn't have cameras, right? So we'll go with iPhone. iPhone camera aimed, right? And on the ready. Or since we want to stay with that tone, Right, if you go back, iPhone cameras, right? iPhone cameras locked and loaded. Right, let's keep that feel. We've lost some words and we're trying to invoke a feeling here. Right, we're trying to set a tone. So let's use that. Let's use that kind of language. And I, we've just lost a few words there. Right, we know who Daredevil is. Daredevil slowly twists throttle grip. Right, again, let's do this. Right, let's put this in caps. So we know where our eye is looking. You see, I'm, I'm not a big, you know, close-ups and extreme close-ups and camera pans and tilts and all that rubbish, right? That's a director's draft for me. It's not a screenwriter's draft. It's closer to the production draft. So in my opinion, not, not everyone agrees with this. In my opinion, the only time you should look at close-up in a script is if you can't direct our eye using description. Right here, yeah, Daredevil slowly twists throttle grip. Now I'm telling them to look at the throttle grip, right? Or we could do this. Throttle grip twisted, right? I know it's, I know it's him, we're on him. That's it. I know he's doing it. I haven't seen another motorcycle. Throttle grip twisted, right? There. Roar of motorcycle engine. Or we've since we've done roar and we want to avoid repetition, motorcycle engine screams. Animalistic, right? Dive into those words that give us a feeling. Animalistic, lion-like. No, that's redundant. We've already got that. Gr guttural. Animalistic guttural. I like guttural for fame, right? The reason I'm taking this out, right? Another rule for me in description, if you can't film it, cut it. If I can't film what you're writing, cut it. And the reason I say that again, there are many schools of thought on that, right? The only other time for me in a description where it's not being filmed is when I'm telling an actor how to feel or to play something, not physically, but how they should feel or how they should move something right? Then it's specific to what needs to happen in the script, right? But I'm never telling them how to move based on what they should be feeling. Guttural growl. We just lopped a little bit more off there. Revving motorcycle engine overlapping with sounds of, um, all right, so we've got motorcycle engine screams, animalistic, guttural growl, 
overlaps with, right? Because we don't need that twice. Overlaps with sounds of a cheering, sounds of not a cheering crowd, cheering crowd, because we've already introduced them, haven't we? Right? I'm putting a space there. It's not a rule. I'm just OCD. Sorry, I am. All right. Uh, dissolve to. You won't get that. You won't get to do that in your scripts anymore. I know William Goldman did it every second, every second he did it. If you read Sundance, uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, it's constantly cut to, cut to, cut to. What that does is slows the pace of the reading down. Uh, I don't, I don't want to read that. Uh, and you won't get to choose what kind of edit that is anyway, as the screenwriter. You won't get to, right? That, that'll be an editing, producing, directing choice. Um, cheering crowd. So overlaps with sounds of cheering crowd. And here's another thing I like to do. Um, I might do it with this one or I might do it down here. Maybe down there's a better one. Um, making the description, the last description line, using transitions in your scripts, okay? Um, don't forget that screenplays have scenes. They have sequences of scenes. And then they have acts in the whole screenplay, right? So there are sequences of scenes as well. This up here was a sequence, right? Till we get to here. This is a new sequence, a different scene, but we can transition. Cheering crowd, right? Mallard, trace, development, Pine Ridge, day, slow motion. I'm still unsure as to why it's slow motion, Mark, but it's going on in your head, so I'm going to leave that there, right? Um, Dante Rogers, biracial, wearing an open face bike helmet painted with red flames, a long sleeve T-shirt, denim shorts, sits atop a bright orange mongoose, Legion freestyle BMX bike, right? It's good. Biracial, okay. It's a little vague. Don't know what that means, right? Wearing, don't need an and. Open based helmet, don't need, don't need a bike helmet. Well, I get to seize on a bike in a minute, so I'll get it, right? Helmet painted with red flames, a long, uh, painted with red flames. That's the end. Wears a long sleeve tee. Right, we can shorten this into T with denim shorts. With denim shorts. He sits atop a bright orange mongoose legion freestyle BMX. I'm gonna take bike out, you know what a BMX is. All right, I'm gonna leave all that in because it's very descriptive, it's very particular, and it also reveals character a little bit. It's the top of the line. If you know your BMXs, a mongoose was a pretty expensive BMX. So I'm gonna leave that in, right? Here we are. He grips the handlebar tight, right? Again, we can grips handlebar or handlebar is gripped. And it, that echoes back to the scene that we saw before. Handlebar gripped tight, right? Sound of, sound of revving motorcycle engine. Still faintly, right? Now, here, I don't mind if this is after we've gotten the character, right? Because this is a transition, right? We're using the transition, not just sound, right? And Mark's done a great job here, right? Because what he's done is not only are we shifting visually to something very similar in the, you know, the handlebar grip tight on a BMX bike, but we're keeping the revved engine, right? It's a link. It's a transition. We can, we can hear and we can see that transition. Right, sound of revving motorcycle engine, still faintly haunting soundscape. Get rid of all the these, and you'll take about two pages off your screenplay. Right, um, further down street. Now, this for me is unfortunate. Right, it's it's not unfortunate, but this is a good example of okay, where am I now? Am I in a different location? Because if I'm in a different location, I need a different slug line. Because there's no street up here; it's a development. Mallard Trace Development, Pine Ridge, right? This doesn't tell me up here that it's a street, right? So let's transition from that into street. I'm going to move along here a little bit so I can save time for questions, right? But look at stuff like this. If you've left a room or you've left a location, even if it's in the same house, new scene. It's got to be a new scene, right? Unless someone is looking further down the street, right? If, if, uh, if Dante suddenly looks further down the street, then we're still in this same spot. But what's happened here is 
further down the street. We're now in a different location, right? So it would be a different scene. I'll just do that. Dante's neighborhood friends, right? Dante's neighborhood friends cheer. Or we could say, uh, gathered round, makeshift plywood ramp, right? Shooting up, not shotting, shooting upside of, little typo there, of old beat up. Is it important it's white? I'll leave it in, maybe it is. Beat up white Hyundai Elantra, right? Is the specifics of the car important? Don't know. We'll, we'll know at some point. I'm going to leave it in. I might even take that out. Gathered round, makeshift plywood ramp, shooting upside. It's a visual. We get to see that, right? That's where they are. All are cheering. Give them a separate action, right? Dante squints at target. Determined, right? Now you could use determined eyes, determined whatever you want. Determined's great. It doesn't tell us much about the shot. You know, how close are we? You could use this moment to get us in close without saying close up, right? That might be a way to do it. Um, uh, uh, do we need to, he, he, and what Mark's doing here, he's telling us shot by shot what we should be looking at, how to direct it. He's directing the eye. Okay, so with the neighbourhood friends, then we're back to Dante. Now we're with the friends again. Smartphone, right? Smartphone cams, I always shorten them cams let's hark let's harken back to the previous scene locked and loaded right what it's doing is echoing what we've been seeing because that's going to come into play later um uh all of this stuff dante's friends impatiently beckon his impending feet <coughs> that's a lot to say isn't it right smartphone dante's Dante's friend, uh, friends, smartphone cams locked and loaded, right? I think that action visually, everyone aiming their phone, they're, 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 waiting, they're awaiting his impending feet. I don't think we need this, Mark. Okay, you can yell at me later if you want to. I've just brought another thing up here. Where are we now? Oh, look at how much we've locked off already, right? 